Okay, hi, my name's Natalie and I'm a PM on the Foundry Local team and this is... Anav, and I'm also a PM on the Foundry Local team. Hello, we're so excited to be here. Uh, we're here to give you a coding demo of Foundry Local, released this morning. Pretty new and pretty exciting. So, what is Foundry Local? It's a developer tool that allows you to run AI models on device. It's great for a few main reasons. So, number one, cost. It's really, really inexpensive when you're just using your own hardware. You don't have to pay for any API keys or any subscriptions to keep you going. Speed, we're very quick, and you know whatever hardware you did pay for, you get to use all of it. Privacy, everything that you're running can be on device and completely offline. For the purposes of this demo, it's gonna be entirely without Wi-Fi, just for the record, except for maybe downloading a model. And then finally, it is cross-platform. So we're both on Windows and Mac OS, and you know it works across the board when you're packaging applications. And it runs uh, models in Onyx format using Onyx runtime. Cool, so no more information overload needed. It's super simple. Let's just get into a demo so you can feel it out. Okay, and I've just put up um, the commands to install Foundry Local on the screen here. So if anyone wanted to follow along, you could um, actually try and do that. You have to be very quick, but um, yeah. Well, you would have to be quite quick, but we have faith in you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm running on my Mac today, but um, as we mentioned, um, it, the uh, Foundry Local runs on Mac and Windows. And to install uh, on Mac, we use the Brew Package Manager. Um, I've already got it installed here, so I'm just gonna check um, whether I'm running. Uh, soft Foundry. You have to just bear with me with my bad typing. Yeah, we'll take a second, but it works on Winget the same way. You can also download it from our repository that's newly public today. Okay, great, so we're all installed and ready to go. Um, to run Foundry Local, you need, um, you need at least eight gig of RAM, um, preferably 16, um, and enough disk space to hold the models that you download. Um, the smallest being around three gig and the largest around 11 gig. Um, you also need a little bit of extra space for the application itself. Yeah, so once Foundry Local is loaded and installed, you can list the models using the CLI. So now he's gonna type Foundry model list, in the meantime, if you really want a lot of fun, you might want a GPU or NPU enabled device. That's a lot of fun. We get really, really fast results. But you can see from the list that there are different models for different devices. We can see CPU as well as GPU over here. And Foundry Local will automatically choose the best model for your device based on just if you just use the ID. So if I pass in 5.4, it'll just grab whatever it thinks is best. And then if I want to be specific, if I want to use either a GPU or a CPU model, I can also specify by that whole model ID on the right. Okay, so I'm gonna do a test run with one of the Quen models. Yeah, so Quen 2.5 is a big improvement over Quen 2 across the board, and we have Quen 3 just around the corner. We know that just came out, but we just wanted to make sure the experience was perfect. Um, for now, we're gonna use 0 0.5 billion because we're really smart, and Natalie has decided that we want a quick download, fast tokens per second for this demo. But as you know, larger models will likely produce better results. So, it's loaded and ready. Should we ask the audience for maybe a prompt to get started? Any ideas? Oh, okay. <laughs> a poem about AI. Cool, let's do it. A, a poem about AI. Wow, that was so fast. Uh, okay, well, I'm not sure about this. I'm gonna read. Let's embrace this force. Yeah, yeah, you know what? <laughs> let's embrace the force. <laughs> Okay, so just to reiterate, this is all running completely offline. I could turn my Wi-Fi off now and you would be seeing the same results. Yeah, so it looks like we've, cons we've just covered the installation, the CLI, and then testing a model. And we'll have links to resources at the end if you want to try this very simple example. And that'll be at the end of the demo. You can also just run foundry dash dash help to give you a little bit more information about what's going on. And this is for every single way through. Any CLI does this, but yeah. Anyway, we've gotten Foundry lo local running and installed and now we kind of know what models we have and how we can use them. Let's do some real work now. Um, I love traveling. Do you love traveling, Manif? Natalie, I love traveling. It's so much fun. <laughs> and I'm not the best planner, so I need all the help I can get. I want to create an application that will create travel itineraries for me. Wow, what a great idea. Okay, so I'm familiar with Python and maybe like Flask. Why don't we whip up a quick app in Python using Flask? Okay. Sounds good. Um, to bootstrap this application, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna bootstrap it with Foundry Local and I'm gonna choose a larger model 
um, that I think will have the best quality. Um, it may not be as fast as some of the smaller models. Um, and just quietly, these models are taking a little bit of time to load. So we might have some work to do in Foundry Local here. Um, but um, we think because this is a one-time step, um, this is a reasonable trade-off. Okay, so let's use everyone's favorite model, DeepSeek R1 apparently. Uh, let's use 7 billion parameters as well, because it's a little bit larger and just so we'll get a little bit more information going. Uh, and then while Natalie, the model's loading, why don't we move up a prompt? So let's have a look at the prompt. So oh, that was fast. <laughs> Anyone might have thought I might have been pre prepared to do that. Um, OK, so um, we're going to output a single page application that can be served um, by the Python Flask tool, as Manav mentioned. Um, and we put in some details about what we want the app to do here. It allows the user to choose a city. Um, we want it to make a back end call to the um, OpenAI API um, chat completion endpoint. Um, so that we can substitute in our calls to Foundry Local. So let's give it a go. Okay, we seem to be up and loaded with uh, DeepSeek R1. Okay, let's put our prompt in. And go ahead and set it. Oh, wow, that's pretty quick too. Not bad. Not too bad. And you can see it's a DeepSeek R1 is a reasoning model. So it's like thinking about what it's doing. It's telling us how it's going to um, output this application. It's outputting the HTML uh, template. Yeah, it's working pretty quick. It's looking like we're going to get a whole app here. Hmm. Not bad. OK, great. And then it even, at the end, gives us instructions about how to install and run this app. Perfect. So while we're still in the terminal and we're kind of working with these models, why don't we also figure out what model we want to use on the end? On the end. So like, you know, we've gotten this app set up, but we also want to make sure that the users are using maybe something a little bit faster. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. we need to um, call a model inside the app to get the itinerary, So, uh, and we need the output to be in the format specified by the application. Um, let's, uh, let's test one to do that. Um, how about, what, what sort of one should we use to test you? Yeah, let's think. Uh, why don't we do Quen25, because I like that one. Well, let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's do maybe the 1.5 billion. I think we were getting too many tokens per second. Let's, uh, let's make sure that we're getting a, you know, a little bit better quality. OK, sounds good. Um, and here's our prompt here um, to create the itinerary. Let's have a look. Um, and this is just an example. The, in the application, you'll be able to actually choose the city. But anyway, let's see what we've got available to us in Redmond. Oh, it's going to explore the Microsoft headquarters. Oh, I'm a big fan of the Microsoft headquarters. I feel like I visit all the time. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so it looks like we've now kind of decided what model to use, as well as uh, you know, the, the, the app is already generated for us. So yeah, why don't we move forward and then figure out where the service is running so we can actually point this app to the right endpoint instead of OpenAIs. OK, so Foundry runs on a local endpoint. We find out the value of that endpoint by uh, running Foundry service status. Um, and then we want to um, set the um, Gee, that was from an earlier test. Um, yeah, so we want to set the uh, endpoint, an environment variable, the service URI, um, to the endpoint that we've copied here so that our app can pick up that value of that endpoint. Great. So we're go going to go ahead and open up the VS Code project over here. That's basically what we generated with the application. And you can see that it's nicely done, very easy. Yeah. So. Um, in the interest of you not seeing my bad typing, we copied the output of the um, the model into these um, into these different sections as we um, add the different steps to the application. Um, this repository, which we'll share at the end of the demo, is all completely public, so um, you can keep us honest by having a look at all of those um, different um, iterations of the application. So this is the the bootstrapped app um, that we have adapted for Foundry Local uh, from the model output, and you can see we've added here. The service URI using the instructions uh, from our README. Um, and yeah, I mean, so it's obviously compatible with the OpenAI API. That's what we just subbed in for, and it's working kind of just the same. We're just swapping that URL, and it's going to work. Yeah, uh, so we just, hope. Just a one line change to add the service URI and then uh, put in that specific model that we were talking about before. Um, just a note. Um, we, Manav talked about the model alias and the model ID um, that you get out of the Foundry model list. Um, for this REST API, you actually need to put in the, um, the, the, the actual ID with the model variant. 
Yeah, it's a bit tedious, but we'll get back to that later. Okay, so uh, let's do it. It looks like our application set up. Let's get some testing going. And I think the model even in the readme told us what we should run to uh, get going and then the URL that it'll be on. So let's hope for the best. Okay, so we want to set it to, it was app.py. I think that's what we saved it as. Yep, and then we want to run class run. Okay, that says it's running. So switch over to our browser and we, Oh, sorry about that. Okay, so that's our that's our app, um, and th this model outputted a drop down list. Um, we can modify that to allow the user to input different values. Um, where would you like to go? Oh, Natalie, you are always talking about Sydney, so it sounds like a great place, and I'd love to go to Sydney. It seems like a really fun time. Hey, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Oh, that was pretty quick. Oh, hey. Opera House looks cool. Yeah, botanical garden could be fun. Uh, uh, yeah, it seems like a cool cool trip. I'd like to do all of those things. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Okay, so now we've created an app with one of our local models, and then we use a different local model instead of the cloud-based options to make sure that we're generating on device. But it was a little bit tedious going through the REST API, not the most straightforward thing. So why don't we make that a little bit easier for us? Um, yeah, and I'll just point out, this, this uh, application isn't really doing anything with these checkboxes, but um, if you were at um, Raji's session, um, she talked about um, uh, the uh, the tooling and agents being in private preview for Foundry Local. So once we get those um, released, um, we will add those um, into this application. Yeah, so we also have an SDK that lets you query models in the catalog and use instead of the REST API. It'll just be a little bit more programmatic and it'll be easier for users to use. So. I believe we already have that installed. But we already have the, uh, the um, SDK installed. Um, it's pip install, Foundry local SDK for Python. There's also a JavaScript one and uh, um, C Sharp in the works. Yeah, so why don't we just quickly look at how we've substituted some code to see kind of what happens now. Yeah, so in the adding of the SDK, we haven't done much to the app. Um, you import Foundry local manager, um, and then you can, instead of having to um, export that URI and pick it up from the environment. You just pick that up from the, um, the, Foundry, um, the Foundry Local SDK. Um, as for the rest of it, it's pretty much the same. Um, at the end, we'll show you where we've actually added functionality to call um, to look at which models are in the catalog and which models are in the cache, and we can actually build those into our application themselves. Yeah, but it looks like we're good to go, and we have a little bit of free time, so why don't we uh, spin up the demo? Okay, great. Um, we will um, actually, yeah, show you that um, show you that demo. We won't the the SDK. It looks the same, but it just has the call to the URI. So um, yeah, let's have a look at this one where we can actually um, run with the list of models that we call. Yeah, so it's mostly the same. We made a couple of changes just for ease of use, but for the most part, it's the exact same application that you just saw. And again, it is honest. It is on GitHub. Feel free to look at it. The Prompts were generated. Yeah, so in this uh, example here, we actually allow you to explore the different uh, models that we have in the um, in the catalog. And if you select a model here that um, you know you don't already have cached locally, then it, the application will download it for you, um, and then you can run with that. Wow, that's so cool. Why don't we try Toronto this time? Oh yeah, good idea. Where would you like to go? Toronto. I love Toronto. That's my place. Right, we got yours. <laughs> Toronto. <laughs> Actually, I always get people say I do not pronounce Toronto properly. Toronto. It's Toronto. That's how right? we say it. Yeah. If you if you're in the know, you say Toronto. All right, let's have a look. All right. Okay. See. What have we got here? I love the ROM. It's a great place. Uh -huh. Little Caesars is a, is a staple. <laughs> <laughs> and the CN Tower is beautiful. Yeah, this is a great itinerary. Okay. There we have it. There we have it. Yeah, so we made this application in 15 minutes in front of your eyes. I'm sure that you know we're, we're a little sloppy. That was 15. Maybe you can do it in 10. Uh, but what are you waiting for? Go ahead and get Foundry Logo on your PC and get off to the races. OK, we've got some links there and the link to the repo. Yeah, thank you all so much. <laughs>